Let's move on. What do we do? Whether we proceed or uh, wait for some time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. No, no, enjoy. Don't wait. Just don't let the procedure start. Just mandra. Start. Just answer. Inka. Inka. Man, I am the time. Just now. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay, sir. Right. Okay, students. Uh, welcome to the gate class, right? Uh, Engineer mechanics. Okay. Three people are there. One, two, three. Okay. Right. So first, tell me, uh, are you attending my previous class? These three people: Jayanand, uh, Indu, Monishka. Are you attending them? Are you attending my previous class? Students, please respond. Please respond. Yeah, Hindu. Yes. Okay. And remaining people, Jan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You also, you also attend. Okay, right, right. Okay, right. Right. So, okay. And just a minute. I will share my screen. Just a minute. So before that, uh, first confirm me. Uh, these three people, one, two, three. Whether you from civil or mechanical? Civil, sir. Yeah, Jayan and civil. And remaining people? Indian yeah, Munish. Civil, sir. Oh, total uh, three people were civil. Okay, right, right. Okay, no problem. Right. Uh, okay. So before we start the session, we just uh, brief uh, what we discussed in the previous uh, discussion session. Right. Right. So coming to the gate. So the, this is somehow different from academic uh, exams, right? And, okay, and one more. Uh, you all are from third year or final year? All three. Third year, sir. Third year. Okay, good, good. Right. Are you applied? Are you applied the gate now? This year? Yes, sir. Right, right, right. Yes, are all the time uh, completed? Right. Uh, I think the, um, still there is a chance, but with fine, I think so. Okay. Okay, so be prepared. Be go. Okay, so coming to discussion, right? So in the previous class, we started the discussion regarding the vibration, one degree of uh, freedom systems, right? In engineering mechanics uh, related to the civil people, so this is a totally new topic. Okay, so this year they introduced this topic, uh, one degree of freedom systems, right? And some topics they left from engineering mechanics, and this is a new added topic to the present uh, gate, twenty twenty one. Right. So just a minute, I will share my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes. Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, before that, uh, I will give two minutes of time. So, uh, students, please uh, go and bring your calculator and some notes. Notes in the sense uh, for record purpose. Why? Because uh, simply uh, seeing and hearing, uh, this is not uh, correct way for good, uh, gate exam. Gate exam needs a lot of practice. Okay. So, it, it needs a lot of, lot of practice. So, we are combining both uh, this practice session and the discussion session simultaneously right so i will give two minutes of time so all of you go and bring your calculator 
and some part of a record recorded sheets recording either notebook or a4 that is uh, up to you okay so whatever you like so go and bring those okay so we have some discussion session and after that we are going to solve the previous gate question uh, questions and some questions related to practice mode okay so this is very very important right okay uh, i think it is clear to all of you so go ahead go ahead so go and bring i will give two minutes of time Okay, friends. Welcome back. Right. So, to clear the great exam, the strategy is very important uh, because uh, great exam mainly uh, it consists of uh, hundred marks, but the cutoff mark is it is around uh, thirty to thirty-five marks. So, those who are crossed this cutoff mark, who are uh, qualified the gate, right? So, for them. uh so government mhrd people they are uh, ready to sponsor the stipend okay so uh, qualifying uh, getting that qualifying mark is a big task for many people right so for that we need the strategy and the plan that is important and how to study the subjects and how to make uh, the practice more effective and how to involve Uh, in the discussions and how to perform well all these are very very important okay so for that first we need the attention attention is very important and the second one is we need the continuity continuity is very important okay so this continuity and doing the regular practice focusing on the exam over a period of long long time these qualities are very very important to clear the gate exam right so whether you are intelligent or not that is secondary but this exam is totally based on your hard work and your continuous efforts and your focus that's all okay whether you intelligent or not that is secondary that is that is no issue even though you, you, even though if you have any backlogs if you do all this and if you practice the good methods and you follow the good instructions and the guidelines to Uh, make your path clear right so those will help to clear the gate exam okay so and for you so i i appreciate you why because you attend again this mechanics class right so keep uh, try to keep this uh, continuity this is very important not only for this class for all the classes because uh, we are already entering to the october right now uh, we have only uh, small amount of time in the sense uh, now october is the November, December, and the January. Only three into thirty, ninety days up there. So hundred days are hundred hundred days are available in our hand. So how we effectively we are using this hundred days to clear this gate exam? This is the important for us, right? So plan accordingly and act accordingly. That is important. Okay, we are uh, 
attending our regular classes also in addition to that we are also focus this uh, exam why because this is very good and one of the best exams for the technical students engineering students okay in india in india right so try to focus and try to maintain the continuity that is very very important right so in our previous uh, previous uh, discussion we started this uh, this vibration topic right one degree of uh, freedom systems and coming to this uh, vibration so i think all this are covered right so in general sense any motion which repeats after fixed interval of time that comes under the vibration part right so engineering mechanics again connected to this uh mechanics mainly deals the bodies which are in either in rest condition or in the motion condition to maintain the rest condition and to change the uh, the configuration the state of a object again it need the force so force external tool or some agent it changes the the state of a objects whether to convert the rest condition to motion motion to rest like that okay so me mechanics mainly deals on the the forces right and the resultant of the forces due to that forces what is the effect acting on the bodies this mechanics mainly focus on these but in gate point of view those people those people in the sense uh, this uh, gate paper setters their mindset is different and again uh, in our previous slides we all discussed the gate people mainly focus on these uh, these mcqs msqs and the fill in the blanks and at the same time they are also focusing on this uh, what it call uh some patterns patterns in the sense just a minute right so level of questions so there is a recall the right? comprehensive application analysis and the synthesis right so whenever they commit and whatever they said in the uh, brochure they stick to, to that brochure and they frame the questions related to within the syllabus but the degree of difficulty it varies that is their specialty okay they focus and they frame the questions some questions related to recall based the facts and the memory based and some questions related to application and some questions related to comprehensive and some questions related to analysis and synthesis okay so those who are having little bit knowledge and awareness to the subject they are able to answer the questions in the gate okay so those people they come in the recall recall stage but those who are having regular practice and the continuity towards the, this preparation of a, a long run so for them they are entering to these all the four sectors this comprehensive application the analysis and synthesis so that's why while writing the gate exam so each and every student they are satisfied why because it seems to be okay for everyone after getting the results only they can they confirm okay these these many number of people they are qualified right so during the exam stage the uh, their their intention in the sense the paper setters mind mindset right to satisfy all the people so that's why there there are level of questions okay so simply attending the classes and knowing the things and uh, this aata hai jata hai this will help you to uh, answer this recall type of questions and somehow if we, if you have some ability to manage the questions and having some previous uh, experience regarding uh, this class work and the subject then you are able to manage this comprehensive type of questions but Uh, for attending this type of questions applications and analysis synthesis you must need regular practice that is only one there is no other alternate and there is no substitution okay you all must follow you all uh, do regular practice so uh, plan accordingly right so prepare a time table you for yourself and at least uh, already already we are entering uh, just 100 days left right so so make your own design how to crack this gate within this 100 days okay so uh, make make one time table according to your uh, wish and your uh, weaknesses and strength right at least other than this academic classes at least uh, try to practice 4 to 5 hours why because we are already approaches to near near to the target okay so now this is the correct time and so try to practice 4 to 5 hours 4 to 5 hours at least right so focus on the aptitude mathematics and your regular subjects okay at least so first you concept uh, grab the all the concepts and the data related to and uh, next go for the practice practice sessions and nowadays uh, there are uh, plenty of uh, websites are there for uh, they are offering this practice test okay some people they are uh, 
freely offer to attempt this practice test some people they go for the premium okay so after completing this uh, discussion and the preparation go for the test attempt uh, as many test as possible okay so then it will give and it will guide you it will create some confidence related to the subject okay okay right so these are the different levels of questions uh, the recall based comprehension based applications and the analysis and synthesis based so based on this uh, this is the subject based and coming to this mechanics point of vibration so this engineering mechanics sometimes they are focusing on the recall type of questions very very few times very few times in the in the past history oh, very few times they are focusing on the recall questions but most of the times they are trying to mingle this subject to another subjects in the sense uh, again in your civil uh, there is one more subject called strength of materials right for the strength of materials again there is a load so this force in the strength of material point of view they treat as a load external acted and those bodies they treat as a deformed bodies instead of the rigid bodies in the strength of mechanics uh, mechanics of materials point of view those bodies they treat as a rigid bodies so due to this uh, uh, deformed bodies in the engineering mechanics point of view we treat as a rigid bodies in the strength of materials point of view we treat as a deformed bodies again the same load right and this mechanics mainly deals the external portion of the body but the strength of materials it deals the internal portion of the body so then there is a connection to this internal and external so these people they are trying to focus these type of uh, scenarios and they frame the questions such that there is a uh, those questions having connection between the this external part and the ex- internal part that means they are combining these two subjects engineering mechanics and the strength of materials so like that these days they are framing these type of uh, questions okay so all this again these type of question they comes from the comprehensive and analysis on the synthesis type based application based so they check the student knowledge at a time um, they help out the two or three subjects okay so don't expect the questions to be straight and directly from the individual subjects every time they are uh, try to club as many subjects as possible that is their style okay that is the uh, gate people style right so in in that in that uh, fashion this engineering mechanic helps for other subjects to enlighten you okay okay so we will see one by one and uh this vibration again uh, connection between the forces and the motion of the systems right i think all yeah, this is covered right so for any any vibrating system so these are some essential points system must have mass having elasticity property and vibration is to be initiated the third point is very very important vibration is to be initiated okay so okay we will see on the one uh, right Vibra- vibration is to be initiated this third point is very very important and coming to the ta- classification of vibration so these are the, some classification of vibrations so based on the direction of vibratory motion based on the excitation based on the degree of freedom based on the loss of energy and based on linearity okay based on the linearity right and we will see one by one uh, so this is the based on the direction of vibratory motion in that again the longitudinal vibrations transverse vibrations and the torsional vibrations i covered all these discussions in the previous discussion just for our uh, discussion sake and just briefing purpose uh, again i am starting from these slides okay all right uh, based on the direction of vibratory motion longitudinal vibration transverse vibration the torsional vibrations motion is parallel to the axis motion is perpendicular to the axis and the torsional vibrations okay right um, okay students uh, at this slide so my suggestion is all of you please note note these points at least Uh, direction of vibratory motions longitudinal vibrations transverse vibrations and torsional vibrations please make note uh, please make note why because these will help in our preparation in our preparation when we come across many many number of revisions this short and uh, uh, this running notes and all the preparation stuff it will help okay this is important so don't delay don't be lazy for for this type of exams always we keep our energy levels in a higher level that is very important okay so don't be lazy don't be lazy right so this longitudinal vibrations transverse vibrations and the torsional vibrations so according to our syllabus they are mainly focus on these this longitudinal vibrations most of the times okay so this transverse and torsional vibrations uh, these are uh, important for the mechanical point of view okay right next so this is one classification based on the director of vibratory motion next based on the excitation just write the side headings it will help you okay based on the excitation so in on the excitation basis again the two classifications one related to natural vibrations and the force vibration 
natural vibration and the force vibration again the natural vibration they also called the free vibrations in our syllabus in our syllabus for civil point of view in our syllabus they have this free vibration systems okay free or the natural vibration systems free vibration systems for mechanical people they also have this force vibration okay in in, in their syllabus this force vibration so there is a separate topic for mechanical people there is a separate subject this vibration right uh, so in mechanics point of view uh, okay this is this is okay for both of them right so this free vibration or natural vibration and this with the force vibration so this comes on the based on the excitation uh, and please make a, uh, any any strike mark or any indication here why because it shows it is there in our syllabus in gate point of view okay uh, for civil people this free vibrations are there All right and coming to based on the degree of freedom uh, this is one important concept every time again uh, in our academic exams and in our again in, in our career also every time this degree of freedom it, this concept will uh, uh, try to uh, fight with us right every time so in general in general in reality most of the objects are three dimensional objects but for our discussion sake or uh, any other sake we treat uh, sometimes these three dimensional objects as a two dimensional approaches why because to analyze any three dimensional objects we need more number of mathematical equations right and that to uh, with the help of the reference only we are always framing the mathematical equations so uh, whenever uh, the body is in three dimensional it need more number of equations and it takes a lot of time and the analysis part become cumbersome to make the analysis easy and everyone to be simplicity we treated those three dimensional objects in real cases also we treat as a two dimensional approaches so for the two dimensional approaches the analysis is easy and the mathematical equations are in in good and uh, easy way okay in that way so when there is a, a body body in the sense in terms of mechanical point of view engineering, engineering mechanics point of view rigid body so rigid body again consisting of many number of particles and each and every particle in the three dimensional there are having three rotations and the three translations three rotations and three translation uh, rotation translation since in the motion point of view these translations uh, related to linear motions and the rotations related to the uh, circular motion so there is x axis y axis and the z axis along the x axis there is one rotation one translation along the z axis one rotation one translation along the y axis again one rotation one translation so totally for a board or a particle in the three in the space it is having three three translations and the three rotations totally 3 plus 3 6 okay so this is for the one particle or one particle if you take a n number of particles and multiplying this 6 into that n number of uh, particles we will get that n times into that six equation 6 and 6 into that n number of particles that many number of equations to solve all that many number of equations it is not possible to solve with our present existing mathematical methodologies and the methods okay so that's why to make the analysis easy and the simplicity and attain the accuracy so all the times as a technical people we treated those real time systems into discrete based systems right so for a discrete systems the degree of freedom and the mathematical expression analysis part everything it comes down and it is okay for us okay so based on this discussion this degree of freedom in, in simple in simple and simple words degree of freedom always tells minimum number of independent independent inputs that the system need to describe a system to describe a system right the minimum number of independent co in coordinates independent coordinates are the inputs that the system need that comes from the degree of freedom so based on the degree of freedom there are two classifications one comes from the continuous system and another comes from the discrete system discrete discrete system for a continuous system our degree of freedom is infinity why because with the one particle there are three rotations and three translations so for that independent quantity 6 6 into n number of particles so it comes it leads to infinite degree of freedom and for the discrete systems so these are the classification single degree of freedom systems for the systems the number of independent inputs required equal to 1 for two degree of freedom it needs two independent inputs and for multi degree of freedom greater than 2 3 4 5 6 any number of degree if it uh, is greater than 2 it comes under multi degree of freedom okay so this is this is one discrete uh, on the discrete basis these are the classification in the continuous systems this is a degree of freedom be infinite right so again in our syllabus in the gate point of view 
uh, for civil point of view and the gate point of view they mentioned this single degree of freedom systems degree of freedom equal to 1 so after writing this right so please make uh, one tick mark here either tick mark or just yes, i will make right so this is there this is there in our syllabus okay single degree of freedom systems this is there and in the previous slide uh, this free vibrations this is there it is there in our syllabus okay so free vibration is there and here the most of the times they are focusing on the longitudinal vibrations okay uh, next so coming to next part so based on the loss of energy okay so on this based on the loss of energy again there are two classifications one comes from the undamped system and another one with the damped system when there is when there is a loss it uh, in general and in common sense point of view it tells or shows so there is a resistance in the system resistance right so that resistance technically in the vibration point of view they treat as a damping damping okay so based on this loss of energy they treat it undamped systems and damped systems in the sense if there is no loss of energy those systems they treat as a undamped and there is no uh, there is a loss of energy for each cycle that loss it may may finite finite in sense uh, either it may be small or it may be somehow big but there is a loss of energy every time in the each cycle of the system okay so those loss in terms of energies they treat as a damped systems right in our syllabus point of view gate point of view uh, they have undamped systems undamped systems and for mechanical people they have all but for us uh, related to this engineering mechanics and the civil point of view and this basic uh, uh, level point of view so these are, these are there undamped systems okay so this is one classification and coming to next based on the linearity of the system every time so this mass uh springs and the dampers they they follow the linear linearity it they treat as a linear systems okay so based on this linearity these are there are two types one be the linear vibrations and the non linear vibrations then what is one be linearity it is very important okay for any systems in general in general or any systems in the technical sense in the technical point of view uh if you consider any system always systems they are connected or associated with the inputs and the outputs inputs and outputs okay if you take any system if you take any system any technical system or any engineering system every time the system is connected to or associated with the inputs and the outputs every system receives some inputs and finally develops some outputs right so most of the times if the input and the output if they if they maintain a direct proportional relation those we treat as a linear based linear type of systems in this sense just just a simple uh, in our uh, uh, 10 plus 2 in intermediate or in 10th class or some school level so there is one equation called the y equal to mx okay y equal to mx so in this so there are two variables m be the slope and x be the one variable and y be the point when there is a change in x automatically there is a change in y okay so uh, if, the, if the x increases if, if x in, y because m is constant here Uh, the slope if x increases automatically the y increases if x decreases automatically the y decreases so somehow they maintain some relation between these two okay so this x this x part and at the same time the y part so the if this relation maintains the direct proportionality so those systems we treat as a linear systems but in reality linear systems are very few most of the times again our uh, real time systems and engineering in our engineering systems they comes under the non linearity based okay for again this non linear systems we need a high level of mathematics right so that's why in in our engineering courses uh, as a engineers we always studied a more number of mathematics subjects why because those methods are help uh, to obtain the solutions or uh, our final output, outputs for our for our systems right so if the system if it maintains the direct proportionality relations like this so those we treat as a linear type of systems and the vibra uh, and the systems vibrations those who follow these conditions they treat as a linear vibrations so in general for any vibrating system they are consisting this masses this is one the springs and dampers 
so we will see we will see uh, what are these elements and why these three only in any vibrating system we will see don't worry okay so the, if these these systems they follow the linear linearity condition linear uh, rules those systems would be as a linear systems otherwise the systems are the non linear okay so again in our syllabus they treated uh, this is not there it is there so after uh, come across these type of classifications in our syllabus they straight forward they mentioned right so based on this classifications main mainly they focus on this longitudinal vibrations there are some there are some um there are some questions related to this transverse also why because in our strength of materials and uh, there is one concept called the beams okay uh, and again for the beams uh, there is a, there, there are two approaches one related to the shear force in the bending moment approach and another related to the slope and the deflections again that deflections they are connected to this vibration there is chance of connection these uh, vibration part to the deflection right so all the times the loading conditions for the beams that it has the transverse base transverse conditions so there there may be chance there may be a chance of uh, clubbing these two subjects uh, with the help of this transverse vibrations there may be chance right and the torsional vibrations okay so to be straight they mention in our syllabus in the gate point of view for the civil and mechanical both people so they mention the long chain vibrations are there transverse and torsional vibrations are also there but most of the times they focus on the long chain vibrations parallel to the, all these columns and the shock absorbers so they comes from this type okay so among these three all the three are there among the among three again this one is very important long chain vibration and coming to this in our syllabus we are only focus on the natural vibrations free vibrations and coming to this we are focusing on only the single degree of freedom systems okay and coming to next we are focusing on undamped system there is no loss of energy there is no loss of energy and coming to next we are focusing on the linear vibration okay so in this classifications again in according to our uh, gate point of view gate syllabus point of view they are mentioned straightly and these are the related topics right so there may be chance of uh, framing a question by taking all these three all the five at a time okay so there may be chance of uh, focusing two at a time three at a time four at a time but most of the times they are focusing all the five at a time okay uh, in the sense let's take one degree of freedom system undamped vibration linear free longitudinal vibrations like that they are going to frame okay so combining all the possibilities and the combinations and put into one question and they are going to check the student knowledge and the ability okay so this is the classification of vibrations if anybody having any doubts regarding this please raise please raise before we move further uh, if anybody having any doubts please raise don't hesitate to ask the doubts and uh, so be interactive okay try to interact it will help uh, to enhance your knowledge levels okay anybody any doubt even though it, if it is a small or big don't don't worry don't worry if anybody having any doubts please raise otherwise we will move further students please respond please respond uh, try try to uh, maintain this running notes okay it, it will help you it will help you in your revision revision sessions right uh, attend the classes is important at the same time maintaining the notes also important uh don't be lazy and don't think in another way all this information again it helps uh, it it gets from net and uh, the screenshots don't go all these substitutions the, for this type of exam exams that will never help you okay it it will provide some data but for these type of exams you need continuous practice practice through conventional methods that's all again you involve your head hand and your heart that's all right Uh, students please respond any doubts in the, in this discussion classification of vibrations janand is it okay is it okay to you yes sir okay good thank you next remaining people monishka and uh, remaining who uh asdeja no doubts sir okay fine thank you right okay so we will move to next by combining and clubbing of all how to solve a problem 
before that we need some uh, general topic and general discussion in the sense how to analyze any vibrating analysis system and how to make and how to get the solution or answer for any problem okay so these are the general guidelines so general guidelines in the sense there are four steps four steps for any problem not only for this vibration problem this is the gen general philosophy for engineering uh, point of view okay four steps the first step is identification of the system elements so first identify what are the system elements related to this in the sense if it is a vibrating system right what is the basic funda for a vibrating system the first essential part to be the system must have mass okay it satisfied next second second point the mass must be within the elasticity limit otherwise uh, there are some problems if it is entered to the plastic zone the discussion is different okay that uh, not comes under this linear type of uh, discussions that is comes uh, enters into the non linearity but in our syllabus they slightly mentioned you were discussion strict to two linear vibrations only so that mass must have elasticity and the third one vibration must to be initiated right so these are the essential parts okay so th these are some identification and for these essentials what are the related and associated and accessories uh, connections to that comes under this identification right so for a vibrating system if in general the elements are mass this is the first element spring this is the second element and the third one be the damper and why these are the elements for this vibrating system we will see we will see uh, there um, there is a discussion in coming slides right so one is the mass second one is the spring and the third one be the damper so these three are the elements of the vibrating system but again in our syllabus they mention very clearly only undamped free vibrations only in the sense there are no dampers so our elements for question point of view or our discussion point of view we shifted to only the masses and the springs masses and the springs but we get we get um, for the for the clarity purpose and the understanding the system point of view we are combining these three okay so every vibrating system must have mass spring and the damper so that is that is the step one so this is step one okay and next step two this is very very important and vital uh, vital step in the sense every time modeling of a vibrating system then what is going to be modeling this nothing but modeling is nothing but develop a mathematical equation develop a mathematical equation such that that equation must consist the inputs of the system and it finally develops some responses of a system that is important the technique we treat it as a modeling in the sense right so develop a mathematical equation such that the equation must consist system inputs as a parameters and after solving that mathematical equation we will get the responses of a system that is important responses of a system so that we did as a modeling modeling then how to do more how, how to do this modeling what are the various methods right we will see we will see don't worry and the next response of a system this is step 2 and this be the step 3 response of a system after getting the mathematical equation our intention is to solve that equation with the help of the mathematical methods okay so in in that in the in that solving that mathematical equation and obtain the final solution in terms of the system responses that we treat as a response and in fourth step if there are any modifications related to analyze the response and make the conclusions is this is okay or not okay and this is general philosophy and again this philosophy is applicable for any problem right first identify the identify the system elements identify the system if it is a if it is a mechanics of solid or deformed body first to identify the system which type of system it is it is a column or it is a beam or it is something what what is that that is the first identification and next related to modeling modeling is since for every system there is a mathematical equation mathematical connection to develop this mathematical equation connection in terms of the system responses and in terms of the system inputs that we treat as a modeling 
and the response so all this mathematical equation then you enter into the third step and analyze the analyze the mathematic responses whether those solutions are feasible or not okay so th these are the general uh, uh, analysis for any system in this, uh, we we take that general analysis to again for our systems wide bedding systems so these are the general steps in our bedding system right so students please make please make note these are very important and among all the steps this the second step is very very important so whenever these people they are uh, trying to check uh, the student understanding levels and the uh, analysis purpose they are going to frame and make the general questions related to this but if you know the approach whether it is a straight forward question or the general question we don't bother we are focusing on this approaches and we are developing a mathematical equation to any problem okay so this modeling is very very important not only for this gate point of view in general for every engineering student again this is important develop a mathematical equations to any systems any problem right so that is the main object of any engineering okay so we will see one by one we will see one by one and we will discuss each and every step in detail in detail so that will help uh, to solve any problems okay right okay so the first step is identification of systems second step is modeling of hybrid system and the third step is responses and the fourth step is analysis right so this is this is the discussion point of view and in uh, words it is okay but as an engineering point of view and the technical point of view we need always the mathematical equations so for that mathematical equations again we need formulas formulas okay so without formulas and uh, without uh, the connection between this inputs and the outputs we are not able to in a position to write the mathematical equation okay right so we will see one by one so the first step this is the step one so somehow there is a in a depth in a depth uh, discussion right for a for a step one what the mention what is that uh, step one tells identification of the system elements okay here there is one term called the system then what is meant by system system is nothing but which converts one form of energy into another form with the help of that conversion or it always performs some useful work useful work that is important system is nothing but system converts converts one form of energy into another form of energy and always with the help of this conversions it always produces some useful work that is important however it loses energy whether it loses energy or not that is secondary but it mainly performs some useful work this is in general sense but all the times and most of the times uh, these engineering systems mainly focusing on the two terms one is called the uh, what is called this is a transmit okay transmit transmit and another one is the transmission 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 okay so these two two terms are very important one is called the transmit and the one is called the transmission uh, try to adjust right uh, uh, writing is not good uh, because uh, uh, again this is with the mouse uh, so try to adjust at least so try to focus on the what to call the this uh, in stuff this uh, this uh, visual form try to focus on the audio okay uh, one is the transmit and another the transmission transmit of transmission of what transmit and transmission of energy that is the main objective of any engineering okay so for your, for a mechanical point of view so they transmit in the transform of energy in terms of the mechanical point mechanical energy electrical people they are focusing on the electrical energy right and as a civil point of view or people you are again focusing the this transmit and the transmission of the loads okay so here again these two terms have some significance so this is the transmission and this is the transmit okay so what is the key difference between these two so in general we have come across this uh, word the transmission of electric lines transmit so one one indicates there is a change in its position and shift from one location to another location and second one tells there is a totally conversion of their form okay there is a totally conversion of the form for example if you take uh, the match stick okay the match stick in the match stick uh, the tip of the match stick it is having some chemical form so whenever you ignite this this chemical form of energy it converts into the heat form of energy it is totally transmits 
it totally changes its shape okay so in the transmission it undergo any change but it it shifts or moves from one location to another location and this transmission transmit it totally change the shape okay in in the, in that in that how in that way so this system always any system mainly focus on the conversion of energy from one form to another form with the help of this conversion it always produces the some useful work okay in the similar lines this vibrating system also uh, it focus on the conversion of energy from one form to another form and it foc- uh, and it develops some useful work okay anybody wants to talk okay thank you right so uh, for any system it consisting three this is important so students uh, please make note a system consisting source of energy method of conversion loss of energy these three are very very important whether it is a natural system or the man made system these three are very very important in the sense the source of energy and the method of conversion and the loss of energy and if you take a natural system for example if you take again human body so for our, for our, for our, for us again the human body it receives some inputs right and again that inputs they have some energy okay whether it is a chemical form or it is a uh, any other form uh, this human body receives some inputs and the body having some mass that mass having some energy it indicates the mass itself uh, indicates right there is a source of energy and again the method of conversion the method of conversion in the sense again in the human body there are some metabolisms and uh, me- mechanisms to convert this energy into useful work okay so there is a method of energy and the loss of energy after doing and many number of uh, uh, do uh, actions on the uh, what it called this uh, work base right it undergoes the loss of energy so it, whether it is a natural system or the man made system this philosophy is common right so in that lines again if you apply that uh, general discussion to our uh, vibrating system again in our vibrating system again there is a source of energy method of conversion and the loss of energy right so for a source of energy what it tells for a source of energy the mass is the indication of availability of energy so that's why in the essential parts of the vibrating system the first essential part be the system must consist of mass if there is no mass there is no discussion so when there is a mass that indicates that the system having some energy there is a source of energy okay and the forms of energy in the sense due to this configuration of the mass and due to the motion of the mass it having to due to this configuration it is having potential energy and due to this motion it is having kinetic energy okay so whenever there is a mass in the system it tells that right so there is a availability of energy there is a source of energy and the system is at rest it is having potential energy and the system is at motion it is having kinetic energy but these vibrating systems initially before initiate the vibrations the system is at rest condition so it it tells that it shows that uh, the system having potential energy and after initiation the vibrations the system enter into the motion part in the sense uh, it, it exhibits the to and fro motion oscillating more type of motions from mean positions so it enters into the kinetic part so so the, uh, there is a conversion there is a conversion that convert this potential energy to kinetic energy so when there is a mass it shows it tells there is a source of energy okay now how to convert so this be the conversion the spring be the conversion spring indicates the kinetic to potential energy and potential to kinetic energy this be the method of conversion method of conversion okay so one is the mass of energy mass indicates the energy and the method of conversion in here the spring and the loss of energy that is the damper that is the damper friction okay so this mass and the spring and the damper so any vibrating system consisting these three elements these three elements one is the mass spring and the damper so mass tells the source of energy spring tells the method of conversion why because spring is the best uh, elastic member in the literature okay we are using uh, in many applications uh if you take uh, this uh, what is called this flip type of pens right at the bottom part of the pen that is having some spin uh, some spring whenever you press uh, at the top of the tip uh, right the the refill comes from the pen and it holds its potential energy when you when you again you press you press the tip point it it uh, re-, re back into the pen pen holder 
okay so that tells so there is a change in potential energy and kinetic energy again if you observe this uh, two wheelers two wheelers in that the stand and bike stand and the cycle stand at, in, at the stand portion so we are having on spring it help it helps to uh, change this stand in and change its location of the stand right and again if you take this wrist watches wrist watches not a digital base in the previous uh, generation of wrist watches it is having inside there is having some springs so due to that key whenever you apply that uh, some force on the key that key makes the turns and those those springs are the torsional based springs and it gains energy in the form of uh, potential form and it again slowly slowly releases this energy in the kinetic form okay so uh, if you take any any again if you if you take the toys right the toys you give the key so based on that energy it it uh, attains the energy in the form of potential and again this potential converted into kinetic energy so every time in, in these applications this spring always converts the one form of energy into another form of energy so in general and and the science point of view also so these are the two energies the potential energy the kinetic energy so spring indicates the conversion of energy and when there is a, a loss it seems to be a damper right but in the in our syllabus in the gate point of view they straight forwardly they mentioned they focusing only on the undamped conditions so for our problems again in energy point of view they mainly focus on these two only the source of energy and the method of conversion that's all so there are problems having mass and in the problems again there are springs okay so this is the step 1 so we are understanding the step 1 an analysis of a vibration system in that analysis of a vibration system the step 1 is identification of the system elements right after come, after getting the question from the paper setter right uh, after getting the question in the exam get exam so first you identify related to this topic what are the elements what are the elements in the question okay whether uh, how many number of masses are there how many number of springs are there why because our syllabus only as a uh, uh, connected to these two only mass elements and the spring elements that is the step 1 okay step 1 to tackle any problem to crack and to handle any problem related to this vibration this is with the procedure okay so in this procedure we are discussing the step 1 the step 1 related to identification of the system elements identification of the system elements right so in that system elements again the system elements are three in general in literature there are three but our gate point of view only two the mass and the spring okay right so this is the step 1 so any doubt any doubt in this step 1 students please confirm please confirm no doubt sir right right okay right okay next next part next step what is the second step uh, right so this is one more important uh, students uh, from my side it is a uh, uh either request or suggestion okay whatever you take uh, you consider that these are very important for our mathematical uh, modeling okay so i will give two minutes of time so all of you uh, make note down in your uh, sheets or the notebook somewhere else why because these formulas are very very important for a handling uh, vibrations problems okay uh, i will discuss this uh, Uh, make make note and uh, follow my discussion simultaneously okay right any vibrating system consisting these three okay fine and again these formulas are very very important i will tell you each and uh, everyone how to use these formulas effectively uh, for solving our problems okay so these three are important right so vibrating system must consist mass springs and the dampers okay fine but in our syllabus there are no dampers so we restrict our discussion to masses and the springs right and again coming to this motion point of view in general there are two types of motions one is the linear motion is the translation type of motion straight forward right and the other one is the angular type of motion here if it is a mass we are we all are know and we all are uh, aware with this right familiar with this the unit of mass is kg ss ss systems so every time we are following this ss system and if it is a angular mass angular mass in the sense uh the mass in the rotation motion angular motion right we we treated that mass again in terms of the mass moment of inertia 
okay so this is the this is the mass in terms of the linear and this is the mass in terms of the angular okay so this is important right so the mass indicates the availability of energy if it is a linear motion linear motion in the sense uh, all this longitudinal vibrations transverse vibrations this comes under linear type of category and the torsional based vibrations those comes under the angular based of uh, motion why because there is a uh, motion in terms of ang angle based angle angle motion okay these are these are the slight rectilinear based and those are the angular motion when the system indicates there is a mass that mass must have mass right so here again there are two approaches why because these two approaches helps in developing the mathematical equations all of you please make note okay if you choose this force based approach right you are going to use newton second law d alembert's principle like that and if you are interested to use this energy formulas right you are focusing on the all this conservation of energy principles okay okay again, again this is up to you whether you follow this force based or you follow this energy based if you are enough enough strong and, and enough confidence in this force uh, terms right uh, you choose either newton second law or the d alembert's principle so those principles again were uh, connected to equilibrium conditions equilibrium conditions right and if you have uh, good confidence in using this energy terms go ahead with this energy terms okay so these are the two approaches if the motion is linear and again connected to either force or the energy that is again up to you if it is a linear motion take any one either force or energy based on this force and energy so develop a mathematical equation that is that is the next discussion we will see don't worry okay so for a mass for a linear type of motion in terms of the force this be the mathematical formula f equal to m into a and we all know and we all are familiar with this newton second law this is not the newton second law this is a mathematical form of the newton second law this is not the newton second law okay mathematical form of the newton second law f equal to m into a here this f indicates the force m the mass value and a is the acceleration and these terms are the linear approaches linear approaches the acceleration is a linear acceleration and the motion is the linear motion that means in the sense uh, the motion follow the straight motion right if it is energy point of view this be the mathematical formula energy potential energy equal to mgh and the kinetic energy equal to half mv square okay so this is half mv square kinetic energy of mv square okay so for a linear motion the discussion of the mass element of a vibrating system if you choose the force discussion the formula is f equal to ma if you go with uh, energy discussion the formulas are potential energy equal to mgh kinetic energy equal to of mv square okay but uh, th there is a uh, in the sense uh, there is a technical point of view uh, there is sl a slight difference between these two uh, this force terms modeling and the energy terms modeling and again that uh, that slight difference uh, it it, it uh, uh what to call it, it comes across through regular practice in the sense uh, after after uh, come across many number of uh, problems you may conclude okay this force terms are helpful for this type of problems and this energy terms are helpful for this type of problems that experience will come after uh, you come across the many number of uh, questions lot of questions okay but uh, at the initial stage and uh, at the uh, starting point of the discussion most of the people they recommend this four stumps four stumps why because these four stumps all this uh, equilibrium principles newton second law d alembert's principle they are very familiar with this so at the initial stage and at the starting point so most of the people they recommend this four stumps will help to develop the mathematical equations but this from the help of this energy equations also energy formulas also we are developing mathematical same mathematical equation and the uh, and the response and the final outcome are also same for both the models both the methods okay so this is this is for linear motion right if you apply the same in terms of uh, angular based so there is some slight variation in the sense the term the force in the linear motion the quantity we treated as a torque 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 in the angular motion 
ओके एंड द मास इन द लीनियर मोशन दट वी ट्रीट एज ए मास मूवमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया इन एंगुलर मोशन एंड द एक्सलेशन इन द लीनियर मोशन दट वी ट्रीट एज ए एंगुलर एक्सलेशन इन द लीनियर मोशन सो दिस फार्मुला एफ इक्वल टू एम ए दिस इज अप्रूव फॉर द लीनियर मोशन दिस फार्मुला एंगुलर मोशन टव इक्वल टू ई आलफा टार्क इक्वल टू ई इंटू आलफा दिस इज फॉर द एंगुलर मोशन सो आफ्टर गेटिंग कंफर्मेशन ऑफ द टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन After uh, after type of question related to the gate exam, first we confirm which type of motion it is. Either in the sense it uh, the motion in terms of the parallel to the axis, perpendicular to the axis, or making some angular oscillations with respect to any point. After confirming this type of motion, and next in the next part we go for the what are the elements associated with this motion. In general, but in our syllabus they mention only two: the mass and spring, and we conclude and we ensure that every time the question coming from the vibrating uh, topic it must consist the mass and the springs only okay there is a, um, no second thought so when there is a question from this vibrating 1 degree of freedom systems those systems always they connected to the masses and the springs to be straight so uh, first you confirm this type of motion after that you make this identification the mass and the springs then you choose which type of uh, method you you going to apply whether you choose the force or you choose the energy that is up to you okay it is up to you and again it depends on your practice mm, practice and this technique uh, uh, the the usage of technique again varies from person to person why because that experience and the understandability and the practice varies from person to person okay right so if it is a but the approach and the concept is same Uh, coming to this for the angular type of uh, motions right so there is a no potential energy form and we will stick to to this kinetic energy form so here it is of mv square for linear type of motion and for the angular type of motion of i omega square here alpha is the angular acceleration and omega is the uh, uh, alpha is the angular acceleration omega is the angular velocity so b is the linear velocity and omega is the angular velocity okay so this associate a connection to mass and next coming to springs coming to spring the again the spring is the linear spring and again the torsional spring there are two approaches one is the linear spring and the torsional spring and if it is a linear spring this be the mathematical formula for a force f equal to k into x This F represents the spring force. Spring force, the force acting on the spring, right? So due to the action force, spring always undergoes two types of uh, orientations. One related to compression, another one related to elongation. Only two, either compression mode or elongation mode. So that compression or elongation, again in terms of uh, uh, this position point of view, it tells the change. Change. there is an initial point there is one final point and we are always uh, focusing on the change if the change is positive it indicates the spring undergoes the elongation if the change is negative it indicates the spring undergoes the compression okay so some, uh, that's why some people uh, for the interest sake right there some people they are uh, writing here f s equal to uh, this k into delta x some people they are interested uh, to uh, mention the change f equal to k into delta x okay so this delta x will tell uh, in the sense uh, it it includes both the states that compression state and the elongation state if the delta x is positive that state be the positive in the sense uh, the spring undergoes the elongation if the delta x is negative the spring undergoes the compression okay so this force so force a little spring force that equal to k into x k into x here the k it represent the spring rate or the spring constant it is the material property okay the spring rate or the spring constant k represent the spring rate or spring constant it is the material property okay and next coming to energy point of view energy point of view for again the spring right so 1 by 2 kx square of kx square of of k x square here again the x square is delta x not for the single x delta x 
so again this is the material property delta x is the change in change in the dimension okay so this is the uh, potential energy 1 by 2 k x square this is the potential energy this comes under the linear base if it is a angular base right uh, the torsional spring the torsional spring here it is a force that force in terms of the angular point of view we treat as a torque okay so this is the spring force this is the torsional uh, uh, torsion torsion related to spring right and here it is spring rate spring rate and this is a, it is a spring rate on, again the spring rate but the torsional spring rate torsional spring rate and here it is x linear motion delta x and here it is theta why because it is angular that is theta okay so delta delta theta this is the, this is the force in terms of the angular motion and coming to energy this is this is 1 by 2 kx square in the similar fashion 1 by 2 this k undergoes the kt spring rate in torsion and x undergoes the theta so 1 by 2 kt theta square and it is 1 by 2 kx square and this is 1 by 2 kt theta square okay so this is the case so this is related to the springs and there is a discussion on for dampers also uh, but in our syllabus they are not mentioned there is no discussion related to damper but just for uh, completion sake right i wrote this damper also so here again in force point of view just the force equal to damping coefficient into velocity and in energy point of view so always uh, this damper undergoes this uh, uh, what it called the loss of energy so there is no linearity linear in sense they are not following any uh, linear uh, uh, structures right so for this it comes under the integrity press integrity press if you uh, make any interest related to so there is one initial position x1 and there is one final position x2 right in between these two positions what is the loss of energy that loss of energy in terms of the damping coefficient right so this x dot into this dx so this be the formula formula for uh, energy but in our syllabus it is not there so that's why i am not uh, focusing on this right uh, we are not focusing on this we are always focus on the mass terms and the spring terms and in the coming discussions and all the problems related to we are using these formulas only very effectively okay so this is important right and coming to this angular motion the torque uh, torsional torsional force Uh, the torsional value uh, related to damping and this is the tor uh, damping coefficient in linear damping coefficient in torsional and omega angular velocity and in similar fashion again this is the torsional damping uh, there is a torsional damping ct and the theta theta dot and some part of d theta and integrating between the two limits the theta 1 and the theta 2 so these are energy point of view but we are not uh, interested in this damping in our syllabus point of view we are only focusing on this mass and the springs okay bye right. so these, these are these are the uh, in depth discussion of the step 1 right so identification of the elements in the identification of the element the source of energy method of conversion and the loss of energy and in detail the method, source of energy related to the motions and connection these source elements to the motions in terms of the mathematical formulas right right so anybody having any doubts please raise please raise don't compromise so compromisation is not good for learning and for this type of exams it is not recommended okay is it clear i hope you all are uh, Uh, following me and uh, writing all this in your notes somewhere else is it so yes okay 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 thank you thank you right the spirit is important why because uh, we are choosing one good target okay clearing the gate exam is not that much easy and after getting uh, that what is called that qualified status it increases your confidence levels no doubt it increases your confidence levels why because i experienced that right <laughs> i cleared the gate exam uh, so i i know i know what what is that feeling i know right and uh, every month uh, taking stipend from the government uh, again that is also one achievement right 
uh, that time in uh, in in those days during my my uh, what call uh, this post graduation right uh, in for every month we are receiving eight thousand but this time they increase that value around twelve thousand four hundred I think so right they increases twelve thousand four hundred. And this twelve thousand four hundred for any single person in the sense, uh, this bachelor persons, right? It is sufficient, and uh, it is good to any any aspect. Okay, that confidence and that experience, right? Uh, it it will increases your what it call your uh, thinking levels and increases your lifestyle and everything everything, right? But to achieve that, you need to practice. You need to focus on the target. That is very important. Okay, you you need to understand each and every discussion in depth and in detail. Why? Because these people they are not uh, that much uh, easy people. All the gate people they are where they are uh, very critical and they are very logical based guys. These uh, gate paper setters. Okay, and every time so yeah. You are fight with uh, uh, great minds. Great minds in the sense, uh, the minds are great in terms of the subject. Okay, so you are all committed this uh, exam, right? So take this challenge as a challenge and uh, uh, make it uh, fruitful, right? So try to make it fruitful, right? Okay, I think it is clear to all, right? So shall I move to next step? Next step. or you want any break students students please tell me or you want any break or uh, uh, continue the discussion or it is one hour okay now continue sir okay 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 thank you right uh, you was pretty also good okay thank you right right so this is uh, this is a step one step one in that uh, in the in detail uh, discussion uh, which helps for us right here uh, there are some points uh, these people this paper setters sometimes they are using some notations and those notations will create some confusions to some students okay uh, somehow somehow some little bit of confusion and some little bit of uh, deviation from the path okay so that's why these people they are focusing fan or uh, some people uh, the people they are focusing on these terms okay we will see we will see one by one uh, there is there is uh, one observation one observation related to this uh, linear motion and the angular motion okay just to see uh, just just a minute where it is eraser This is there. Ah, uh, just a minute, just a minute. All right, so pen. So here, ah, uh, we're focusing on the linear motion. Students, if you want to take, ah, uh, make note in your notes. Linear motion, and this one is the angular motion. There are some similarities. Similar in the sense, ah, uh, uh, we need these terms very confidently. In the linear motion, if it is a force, force, force. Right force that we treat as a torque, torque in angular motion. That is important. Torque in angular motion. Okay. If it is a velocity, velocity in linear motion, velocity in linear motion, that we treat as a angular velocity. Okay, angular velocity. So try to focus on the. uh what it call audio don't focus on this this is just for our understanding sake right uh, this writing is not good but uh, i am not having uh, other alternate so try to adjust right uh, and next one is the acceleration acceleration in linear acceleration in linear angular acceleration in angular acceleration in uh, what it call angular acceleration in angular motion okay so force into terms torque velocity into angular velocity acceleration into angular acceleration and if it if it is any there in the displacement displacement in linear 
displacement in linear that is the angular displacement angular displacement in angular motion angular displacement in angular motion and energy is same energy is same in the both the motions this energy that energy that everything is same right and every time and most of the times these people they are following some notations notations in the sense in general uh, in mechanics in the mechanics there is a discussion called the displacement velocity acceleration and the fourth term called the jerk okay velocity it is nothing but the change in displacement to two time for a one unit particular time period what how much amount of uh, displacement change that will take place it is time and for acceleration change in velocity two time and for jerk change in acceleration two time right so uh, while writing this velocity term in general we are following this derivative two term so d uh, derivative two if it is uh, okay to make uh, distinction if it is s so ds by dt so velocity equal to ds by dt okay velocity equal to ds by dt and for acceleration point of view it is a change in again acceleration so this is a, a change in velocity to change in velocity that is nothing but the change in terms of the displacement point of view uh, derivative square to point and if it is jerk the total acceleration so this ds by dt d square d square s by dt square right every time writing this it may it consumes time and every time in terms of the derivative form it makes uh, some complexity uh in terms of uh, psychological point okay so to avoid all this right so these people and for the exam point of view they follow some notations notations in sense if it is a displacement in linear point of view they treat it is a x and in angular point of view they treat this is theta displacement okay one is called the x and the other one is the theta and in com in our coming discussion also we are following these notations okay so um, try to uh, make note and try to focus on this clear so x is a linear displacement and a theta is the angular displacement and next a velocity change in displacement that is x dot x dot and this is theta dot theta dot and coming to change in acceleration that is x double dot double dot and this is theta double dot theta double dot so these are the terms we are going to use in our coming discussions so x displacement x dot velocity x double dot that be the acceleration okay so every time writing this uh, ds by dt d square s by dt it, it time consume base and again this shows this derivatives some people they are not uh, uh, having enough confidence on the derivatives it it makes them psychologically weak okay so to avoid all this we are following these notations okay so x for the angular displacement x dot for the uh, x for the ang uh, right uh, x for the linear displacement theta for the angular displacement x dot for the linear velocity theta dot be the angular velocity x double dot be the linear acceleration theta double dot be the angular acceleration okay somehow if you are not understand this theta theta dot theta double dot if you are interested to write so this theta is theta theta dot equal to in general angular velocity angular velocity omega omega so that's why here it is a omega square v square okay and if it is a theta double dot so we are uh, following this notation as a alpha alpha okay that's why here it is alpha angular acceleration okay so angular acceleration angular velocity and if it is a linear velocity velocity v acceleration a right so in our coming discussions we are following these notations one is the uh, for a linear x x dot x double dot and for a angular theta theta dot theta double dot is it okay students is it okay we are following these notations in our coming discussions okay right thank you right so one is the x x dot x double dot theta theta dot theta double dot right so this is the step one in depth discussion right and one more observation point right uh, make note make note every time there are some connections connections in the sense if you take this x this be the displacement and if you consider this damper also just for our discussion sake this is the velocity and the third one this is the acceleration right 
if you observe carefully the spring force associated to displacement the damping force associated to velocity and the mass force mass force in the sense this force is taken as a inertia forces in inertia forces right inertia forces associated with to acceleration so this is one observation spring forces are connected to displacements damping forces are connected to velocities and inertia forces are connected to accelerations this is one observation and every time again in this formula this mass it is a material material property and the k material property c damping coefficient that again related to material property okay so based on the material and the type of uh, damping this damping coefficients are given so every time there is a connection between this force indicates the this is the force right and the mass material based and the acceleration velocity and displacement those are the motion characteristics so whenever there is a force acting on the material there is a change in the motion characteristic whether the change in terms of our acceleration that in terms of the uh, displacement or in terms of velocity that is uh, again differ but whenever there is a force acting on a body in the sense whenever there is a force acting on the mass it causes there is a change in the motion characteristics this is one observation okay so this is this is one observation so this um, try to catch the philosophy that is important why because with this philosophies and understanding sometimes they are going to frame questions okay in general for understanding any general systems and uh, general questions we need these philosophies these are very important conceptual base right so force terms that means inertia forces are connected to accelerations spring force are connected to displacements and the damping force connected to velocities but in our syllabus uh, the uh, st straight forward they mentioned only the undamped conditions so there is a forces inertial forces to accelerations spring forces to uh, uh, displacements so in again in our mathematical expression also we are come across these only accelerations and displacements like that right so this is the discussion regarding the step 1 okay uh, right so any doubts i think it is clear right uh, just a minute i will make uh, uh, this that is right so all these so these formulas are important for our discussion in the step 2 the step 2 in the sense uh, this modeling point okay modeling modeling cases we are using these formulas right so every time so try to focus on all those steps the that four steps those four steps are very important the first step is understanding the element system elements right in terms of the uh, given conditions and the second step is develop the mathematical model so these are the formulas these are the formulas we are going to use uh, in the next step modeling concept okay right i think it is clear and we will move to the next step next uh, okay just yeah yeah uh, all these are uh, try forward right if there is a linear spring uh, the spring the spring constant it is a straight spring force equal to spring stiffness into x so this is spring stiffness sometimes it has a spring rate spring rate okay so normally used are helical springs so these are the helical springs helical type of springs if it is a linear type of motion so these type of springs they are recommended if it is a rotational base all this comes on the torsion rotational base so these type of torsional springs they are used in the watches toys buzzer bells like that okay so they are using this and here one interesting point students please make note this the spring rate or the spring constant inversely proportional to the number of coils are the turns it is one interesting point right in the previous and the past uh, gate questions they are framing some frame some questions with the help of this statement the spring rate inversely proportional to the number of coils in the turns okay so these be the number of turns or the number of coils and that to this k spring stiffness 
maintain the inverse proportionality inverse proportionality in the sense if uh, n value and the k value they maintain the inverse proportional okay so this is one important point so make note make note in your uh, uh, what call the supporting documents are the note notebook somewhere else right and remaining uh, points are straight forward we already discussed all this linear springs spring force into x torsional springs instead of spring force here it is for uh, torsion and it is kt to t okay theta in terms of uh, angular right okay so these are the helical springs these are the torsional springs okay next so these are these are also torsional springs these are these are also torsional springs all this right next 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 step second step so this is very very important uh, so please pay attention how to write a mathematical equation if you are succeed in writing these mathematical equations for any problem in the gate exam right you automatically clear the gate okay so developing the equations and or modeling the equations or writing the equations and solving the equations that is also that that is only important all the problems right they are having this uh, connection modeling connection right so that is step 1 the previous discussion and the next step 2 modeling of a system what does this modeling tells okay so modeling is nothing but obtaining a mathematical relation this is very important obtaining a mathematical relation in terms of system inputs to describe the motion of the masses system inputs to describe the motion of the masses okay so obtaining a mathematical relation in terms of the system inputs to describe the motion of the masses it seems to be straight and simple but it needs some attention okay first you identify what are the system inputs and how to connect these system inputs to the system and with the help of that how to develop a mathematical relation that technique we did as a modeling modeling and finally that equation must give some responses in the sense it describe the motion of the masses okay we will see we will see one by one what are the various modes and right so these are the methods students please please make a note these are the methods methods of modeling okay so there are uh, two methods two methods in sense the first method based on the principle of equilibrium the first method based on the principle of equilibrium okay so in the equilibrium method we all are uh, familiar with this newton's second law newton's method and the d alembert's method newton's method and the d alembert's method right if you choose this you are going to use the force so then the force in terms of the equilibrium conditions okay this is the method one the in the methods of modeling the first method is based on the principle of equilibrium in that based on the principle of equilibrium that mother that it has a either equilibrium mother newton's uh, newton's mother or d alembert's mother okay we will see we will see one by one and don't worry i will tell you each and every every point don't worry don't worry right so, but please make note please make note these are very important right so mothers of modeling based on the principle of equilibrium so this is a point and next mother based on the energy and we already discussed the table form some formulas related to force if you choose the principle of equilibrium you are going to implement those force equations force formulas and if you choose energy method you are going to implement those energy formulas so for that that table is very very important for us for solving the problems okay right and in the energy methods again the based on the conservation of energy principles rayleigh methods lagrangian's method and deflection methods like that but in our syllabus uh, this this is the only one energy method and uh, these are there in the literature don't worry but in the initial stage and at, uh, we are at, uh, new to this uh, discussion we are focusing and we are going to use this principle of equilibrium why because uh, from the first year onwards we, are, we all are know how to write the equilibrium equations and how to solve those right so instead of uh, going for the new method uh, we are use our known method to find the solution to the 
problem okay so in our coming discussions we are going to use either newton second law or the d alberts principle so these two are equivalent and there is only small variation but in our point in my point of view both the methods are same either it is a newton method or the d alberts method both the methods are same right to make that uh, dynamic equilibrium to uh, st equivalent uh, static mode so this d alberts uh, proposed is is better okay d alberts method right so these are the methods of modeling in the step 2 modeling of a system the modeling is nothing but obtaining a mathematical relation in terms of the system inputs to describe the methods of and to describe the motions of the methods here the blue color indications these are the keywords these are the important points okay so in in for developing these mathematical equations again we, we need the methods that methods again in terms of the principle of equilibrium in terms of the energy method right and in our coming discussions we are going to use this principle of equilibrium principle of equilibrium in the principle of equilibrium again either newton's method newton's second law or the d'alembert's method okay right right and coming to procedure how to apply this methods to make a mathematical equation this be the procedure if you follow this procedure step by step right after uh, reaching this step 4 you are in a position to write the equation of a motion right i i will i will show you and i will i will discuss each and every one don't worry but this be the procedure students make note this one also this is also very important this procedure is very very important for developing the mathematical equation how to write a mathematical equation to the system right so this be the procedure so what is the procedure this procedure again in terms of the vibrations point of view in the sense uh, the one degree of freedom systems okay so coming to this procedure the step 1 first identify the all the elements what are there in the system whether the system consisting only masses springs and the combination of both the masses and the springs or it is having any dampers like that okay so here uh, if you observe carefully i wrote i mentioned masses and the springs that means in a question there is a chance of n number of springs n number of springs means and there is no single spring n number of springs more than one spring there is a chance of more than one spring in a question and the more than one masses at a time again in the question if there is a single mass on the single spring question is simple and straight forward if there are n number of springs and n number of masses question um, seems to be complicated okay so that's why first you identify how many number of masses are there how many number of springs are there in the question this is the first point right and the next step 2 after identifying this right so give a small possible motion to the mass that means either in terms of the disturbance and the displacement why it is necessary it is necessary because to exhibit the oscillations or the vibrations from the vibrating system it must always undergo some initiation process okay so that process we treat as a, in terms of the disturbance and the displacements so give a small possible motion to the mass okay that in terms of the displacement and the next step 3 after give to the small motion to the mass step 3 draw free body diagram this is very very important draw free body diagram and again in our engineering mechanics this is uh, very important and vital to to solve any engineering mechanics problem okay then how to draw free body diagram these are the steps right assume mass is disconnected with all what why this assumption because in our system there are some masses there are some springs okay and there are some connections somehow some somehow connected to the mass either in terms of the spring connections or in terms of them different connections so for these connections first assume mass is disconnected with all the connections disconnect in the sense whenever there is a connection try to disconnect that is be the one assumption right at every disconnection replace those connections with reaction forces that is very important okay that means in the sense so there there is one uh, circular disk it is there in the on the floor okay so this is a circular disk having some mass 
so identification of the system elements so there is a mass and there is no mass there is no spin so give a small possible displacement give a small possible displacement in terms of air angular motion angular displacement like that so draw the free body diagram so for this free body diagram assume mass is disconnected disconnected in the sense here these two are the connected so i assume that and i disconnected these right assume mass is disconnected with all and at every disconnection replace with the reaction force so here it is a one reaction force so replace with one reaction force okay so how many connections with with that mass right for n number of connections again n number of reaction forces are replaced with the with those connections okay after this replacement of reaction forces add there are some adding points what are those add self weight self weight this is the next force and the external forces if there are any external force acting on the system add those external forces to the system and the inertia force inertia again resistance inertia force and how to calculate this inertia force inertia force right numerically equal to the force point only again the magnitude of the inertia force obtained from the mass times of the acceleration and it is direction is opposite to the displacement this is the point okay the inertia force magnitude is mass times of the acceleration and the direction is the opposite to the displacement right so again in this procedure the step 3 is very vital right uh, drawing the free body diagram and with the help of the free body diagram framing the equation of motions right that be the step 4 equation of motion you are using the forces the find sum of the all forces and equating to zero get the equation of motion this is a linear based okay equilibrium equations again sigma fx equal to zero sigma fx equal to zero sigma f phi equal to zero okay sigma f phi equal to zero equilibrium equations sum of all the forces and equating to zero that be the equation of motion this equilibrium equation the equilibrium equation that has a equation of motion for every exercise if it is a linear motion if it is angular motion so find the all the moments and the torques and equating to zero so instead of x uh, right we are using all the forces the torques and the moments equated to zero that's all okay torque uh other is moments all the moments equating to zero okay this is the points so this is the procedure right if you follow this procedure and choose any of the method either in terms of the force or in terms of the energy you are able to develop a mathematic equation in a easy way okay so again in our discussion we are going to use this equilibrium method equilibrium method in sense we are going to use the force equations force equations clear and this is the procedure step 1 identification of system elements step 2 give a small possible motion to the system a masses why because vibration system must uh, need some initiation and in step 3 draw the free body diagram for the masses in the free body diagram and again there is there is some uh, guidelines so assume the mass is disconnected with all the connections and at every disconnections add one connection in terms of the reaction force and add self weight external forces inertial forces if there are any in the system to the same point and how you calculate the inertial force magnitude inertial force magnitude obtained from the mass times of the acceleration and this direction is opposite to the displacement and after getting all this right so make the sum of the forces equating to zero if it is a linear motion that equation with the equation of motion and if it is a angular motion sum of all the moments of the torques and equating to zero that we make to the equation of motion for the angular motion and during this uh, summation of all forces and torques we are following the sign conventions if the force towards right two force upward force downward force towards left moment uh, make the clockwise sense anti clockwise sense in that in that scenarios we are following the sign conventions clear right so students uh, so please observe uh, i will give one more one moment for this procedure if anybody having any doubts please raise and please stop me here only otherwise uh, if you are not having good clarity and uh, uh, connections to all this you are not in a position to develop a mathematical equation for vibrations not only for vibrations for any mathematical uh, any engineering problem okay so if you have good clarity it is easy for you
so anybody having any doubts regarding this stop me and ask and try to interact with me okay i will give one minute one minute time so just uh, brush up uh, what are the ideas and the concepts we had just now we discussed right so please uh, refer and go through all right and if you have any doubts till now from the starting point till now please stop me and please rise in the next step we are going to uh, solve this memory click question that will be the response of a memory click question step 3 students please respond please respond students please confirm me whether it is okay or not sir it's okay sir continue okay okay right 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 okay and next and coming to next uh, step 3 before going to step 3 so so take the small case right and apply all this apply all this in sense apply the step 1 and step 2 and get some some what is called this uh, clarity regarding this okay so for that this is one small case case 1 in the sense one degree of freedom linear undamped free longitudinal vibrations actually this is there in our syllabus okay in our syllabus they are focusing on the undamped free vibrations they mention only this point only undamped free vibrations that to 1 degree of freedom they mention again 1 degree of freedom 1 degree of freedom undamped free vibrations okay undamped 1 degree of freedom vibration systems okay so again based on the classification of the vibrations based on the degree of freedom 1 degree based on the linearity linear based on the loss of energy undamped and the free based on the excitation longitudinal based on the axis of vibrating motion so this is the case combining all the five at a time this be the case so for this case this be the best example okay up to now we are discussing some concepts related to vibrating systems from now onwards from this uh, this stage onwards we are slowly converted our discussions into mathematical formulas and after converting this mathematical formulas in the next stage we are going to solve those mathematical formulas and find the solutions to the formulas and that solutions we try as the responses and again those responses again connected to the motion characteristics motion characteristics of the systems right so for that we are, we are moving step by step step by steps we are completed two steps okay two steps were completed and with the, for the two steps we are going to discuss those two steps with one example okay so this is one example right so take this take this body uh, so there is a spring and mass system this is spring and the mass system it satisfies all these conditions one degree of freedom system in the sense if you give a small possible displacement here there are if you make the reference this be the references okay uh, this be the references and if you give a small possible displacement it is in the this vertical plane this plane and there is no type of uh, uh, motion in the horizontal and there is no out of plane so it focuses on this uh, what it call if you take uh, this x y and z this is the z plane otherwise if you take x y z because we are uh, already uh, familiar with this x y and the z so this is the y y direction plane so in this direction only there is only one dip, uh, dip, uh, independent parameter so one independent parameter and again how you uh, conclude this system be the one degree of freedom system there is one formula mathematical formula in the sense degree of freedom degree of freedom equal to 3 times of the number of masses minus Uh, number of masses minus the constraints. Okay, so this three be the three degree of freedom. Uh, in the sense, uh, here n represents the number of masses. 
here the number of masses mass value is one so if you substitute this in this formula the three into this one right minus c here c represents the number of constraints number of constraints in the sense this system this mass it is not able to move in the x direction and it is not able to move in the out of the plane in the y direction so here the number of constraints are the two it is it is in a position to move in this vertical direction only only in this vertical direction so here there is no constraint but in this direction horizontal direction and out of the plane there is a constraint so here the number of constraints are the two so automatically the three minus two one so this degree of freedom system is a one okay so this is the one so it satisfies this one degree of freedom okay and coming to next linear right so this helical spring just now we come across this helical type of spring in the, uh, the previous slide helical springs and this follows the linear and this mass also linear why because in our syllabus they mentioned we are focusing only on the linears so it satisfies the linear 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 condition and undamped there is no damper if there is a damper in the system right that diagram it seems to be like this so this is the spring right and in general so this is the damper notation okay this is the damper this is the damper this is the damper notation okay and there is no damper so it seems that it is the undamped it is happy undamped okay and next and the free after getting the excitation from the initial stage it is free to vibrate and if it is, there is a force vibration there is a force indication on the system like this there is a force it tells that there is a continuous excitation and it is it seems to be force vibration and here in this case there are no force vibrations so it is a free free vibration and next point and here it is a mass here this be the axis okay axis and the motion is parallel to this axis right like this this spring vibrate in in the first slide uh, we we saw the animation right uh, parallel to the vibration so that it be the longitudinal vibration so in this example in this uh, small example right it satisfies all these conditions one degree of freedom linear undamped free longitudinal vibrations so again in our syllabus they mention very clear they are mainly focus on this type of systems only so the questions which are coming from this particular topic those questions again connected to the masses and the springs that be the conclusion okay right so for this uh, system how to develop this is the identification identification of the system this step one completed and the next step two for this uh, system how to make the mathematical modeling that is important again okay so we will see one by one how to do this mathematical model mathematical model right so so for the mathematical model uh, approaches approaches in the sense in terms of the energy in terms of the force equilibrium so we are going to use the force equilibrium okay right so the step four step one identify the mathematical modeling modeling okay obtaining the mathematical relation we are going to develop a mathematical equation uh, first step one identify the system elements so here the system elements are the masses and the spring happy mass indicates the source of energy spring indicates the conversion of energy okay right And next step two, give a small possible displacement in terms of the mass. Okay, so I will take the small possible displacement. That displacement in terms of the x, in terms of x. That means before this giving a this displacement, there is a small discussion. Small discussion. That discussion in the sense, initially to make uh, this spring mass system. right initially there are two elements the spring is different element and the mass is the different element okay so whenever uh, for example for the uh, take so this be the initial position of the spring initial position of the spring whenever mass attached to the spring attached to the spring right due to this mass and due to this mass it having some weight and it this force acting on the spring and the spring undergoes some elongation elongation okay so the spring undergoes some elongation here previously it is there and now it is there so this they treated as the elongation change in the location that is the delta x okay this is the first point before we are giving to initiation vibration initiation to the system 
by by simply connecting this mass to the spring due to this mass the spring undergo elongation elongation there is some small elongation in the spring right at this stage if you write the free body diagram for this elongation spring and here it is the forces forces related to this mass the mass value okay and for a spring point of view the uh, we are going to use the equilibrium equations so the spring force equal to k into x k into x that x again related to this delta x delta x okay that is important so here the forces acting are the one is the spring force spring force acting upward why because so this is the mass assume mass is disconnected here we connect disconnected this and adding one reaction force at this, at this disconnection that is acting upward why because this is moving downward reaction force is acting upward okay so that force be the spring force that force be the spring force and the due to next add self weight weight that weight force in terms of the mass that equal to m into g m into g so at the equilibrium at the equilibrium these two forces the spring force and the mass weight force these two are balanced these two are balanced the spring force and the weight force these two are balanced okay so that is how this this is a discussion w equal to m into g that equal to k into delta and how you get uh, this k into delta this spring force spring force equal to k into this delta k into this delta x okay after substituting this k into delta x this k into this delta x that equal to m into g m into g that's all okay so this be the equilibrium condition equilibrium condition before you initiate the vibrating system okay this is very important why because these two terms are cancelled out cancelled out in the latter stage so that's why these two are important and in our uh, previous uh, discussion session one of our friend asked sir uh, why this uh, acceleration due to gravity and how this gravity force influences this springs okay like that the uh, one of our friend asked this question right so we are take care this gravity force also but this gravity force again uh, balanced by this spring force okay we will see we will see right so this is the initial discussion initial discussion in sense before we cannot uh, uh, we make a small vibration into the system this be the discussion force equilibrium equation right so whenever the mass connect to the spring due to this connection and the equilibrium uh, phase these are the equations right and next step one identification of system elements okay step two make a small possible displacement right so this give a small possible displacement x right and then step 3 draw the free body diagram right so for drawing this free body diagram first what is the step one i uh, identification of the masses and add a disk assume that the mass is disconnected to all so here the connection is with the spring right and make one uh, reaction uh, reaction force at the disconnection so here the disconnection force is the spring force spring force spring force reaction force and uh, again in our notation the uh, the downward downwards has one convention automatically the upward is the opposite convention okay if you take the upward force as a positive the downward force is negative uh, automatically so this spring force it it makes upward force and the next add what are the next adding elements self weight self weight that is the m into g self weight and add external forces if there are any external forces in the system initially add those forces and the next add inertia force and how you get the inertia force the inertia force magnitude okay we will discuss uh, and this be the inertia force inertia force inertia force and again it is upward why it is upward it is always acting opposite to the displacement okay the here the displacement is in downward direction and the inertia force direction is opposite to the displacement upward direction okay so these are the cases so this is the point first identification of the system elements next give a small possible displacement and the third one and uh, draw the free body diagram in the free body diagram the first step assume the mass is disconnected with the connections and every disconnections add one reaction force we are added this right and add self weight we are added add external force if there are any and add inertial force 
when there is a national force in the problem that uh, problem comes under the d number spread okay right and the step 4 what is the step 4 make all the forces a summation of all the forces and equate to zero that be the spring force that be the equation of motion equation of motion right here the forces we are considering the upward forces are positive downward forces are negative so sum of all the forces so inertia force f i right spring force f s and these are the positive why because these are upward minus m into g down of force equal to zero this be the equation of motion but these in terms of the forces so we are going to simplify uh, by substituting those magnitude values this inertia force equal to m inertia force value magnitude equal to the mass times of acceleration and again the acceleration we are going to use this x double dot rotation and for the spring force spring force equal to spring stiffness into delta x but here in this case there is initially there is one delta x and there is one x due to this in initiation so there is a change of x plus delta x here this is the point this is this is only important point for this case spring force in general formula spring force equal to spring stiffness into delta x change in the displacement k k okay fine the displacement eh, after attached to the mass to the spring there is some small displacement that is delta x right so that that is before the system vibrate may uh, exhibits the vibration that is the delta x change in uh, change in length change in deformation and due to this small disturbance again this x so this total delta x means x plus delta x for this case and this minus value m into g m into g this is equal to 0 right after make uh, some more simplification this k into x plus k into delta x minus mg equal to 0 but for this equilibrium initial equilibrium equation k into delta x equal to m into g so this term k into delta x this term and this minus mg these two are cancelled these two are cancelled then the final expression in terms of this point m x double dot m x double dot plus k into x that equal to zero happy so this is the equation we are uh, using in our next uh, discussions right and all the gate problems they are connected to this equation only m x double dot plus k x equal to zero right so simply by using the step one and the step two step one identification step two modeling develop a mathematical equation and again yeah, here we are using d alberts principle force methods right so students any doubts please raise please raise right so this be the final expression so please make note uh, somewhere else mx double dot plus kx equal to 0 so this is important for our problems for our gate problems mx double dot plus kx equal to 0 okay uh, so we, we are initial we are initial and this is new to our this uh, our uh, silvers so that's why i'm focusing on little bit uh, this derivative part but I, in in practice in gate there are no derivations and there are no questions from the derivations but to make our understand more elaborately right so i am focusing on some some steps some steps related to derivation okay but don't bother so all of you try to uh, remember this formula mx double dot plus k is equal to 0 and here if you take this k into x this is be the spring force m into x this be the inertia force inertia force plus spring force equal to zero that is the one degree of linear undamped free long reach of vibrations that is the equation for this case okay one degree of freedom linear undamped free long reach of vibrations m x double dot plus k is equal to zero so again the inertial force m inertial force associated with the acceleration spring force associated with the connections this is the mass this is the mass this is the material property this is the mass equal to zero this is the step 2 how to develop a mathematical equation is it clear students is it clear any doubts no doubts uh, no doubts means uh, there are two orientations one everything is clear and remaining part is 
you know very well right which one i choose is it clear or first one <laughs> right okay thank you thank you right 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 okay uh, okay all of the time is uh, 540 uh, okay and what we do uh, we will stop here or we will proceed uh, we will stop sir okay okay man thank you already it is 2 hours okay okay yes, sir okay students uh, thank you one and all we will continue the discussion in the coming sessions right um, all of you all of you please uh, may, uh, try to uh, make revisions this formulas as possible as as many times as possible okay Why? Because these are very important in our coming discussions, right? Uh, from the next discussion, I was uh, there are two steps left: response of an equation and analysis of equation. After completing those two steps, we are directly enter into the numerical problems. First, we go for the practice mode, and next we look the previous gate questions. Okay, okay, students. Thank you, thank you, one and all. Happy weekend, happy nice day. Bye. Thank you, sir. Welcome, welcome. I'm sure we'll leave, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am.